أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة يونس عليه الصلاة والسلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما كان هذا القرآن أن يفترى من دون الله ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل الكتاب لا ريب فيه من رب العالمين أم يقولون افتراه قل فأتوا بسورة مثله وادعوا من استطعتم من دون الله إن كنتم صادقين بل كذبوا بما لم يحيطوا بعلمه ولما يأتهم تأويله كذلك كذب الذين من قبلهم فانظر كيف كان عاقبة الظالمين ومنهم من يؤمن به ومنهم من لا يؤمن به وربك عالم بالمفسدين صدق الله العظيم رب شحر صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وأعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا آنس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منهما نسينا وعلمنا منهما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آنا الليل وآنا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين آمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters of Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته You must have noted that although we had completed our study of Surah Yunus up till Ayah 38. But we are beginning today again from Ayah 37. Because you know the subject which was under discussion, the sequence and continuation requires it. And this Quran is not such a thing which could be composed by anyone else but Allah. وَلَكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Now there are three dimensions of the Qur'an. It's literary beauty. That was a miracle for the Arabs. They could appreciate. It was their own language. So actually, this aspect of Qur'an being a miracle was most apparent to the Arabs. So this is for them. Number two, وَلَاكِنْ تَصْدِيقَ الَّذِي بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Second dimension, it confirms that which is present before, his, before it. That is Torah, Injil. Although Muhammad never studied them, sallallahu alayhi wa He was an unlettered person. He didn't know what is Torah, what is Injil. مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِيمَ الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَحْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا We shall study this ayah in Surah Al-Shura. So that aspect was a miracle for the people of the book. وَالتَّفْسِيلَ الْكِتَابِ الْعَرَيْبَ فِيهِ And third dimension is that it is the 
details of the law and this is for whole of humanity for all time to come. La rai mafi. And there is no doubt about it. Bil Rabbil Alameen that it is from the Lord of all the worlds. Now because here in the Bakki Surahs the main address is to the pagan Arabs, the unlettered one, the Ummiyeen, as now they are asked and challenged regarding that aspect of Quran which relates to them. And that is the beauty of Quran, the literary beauty. Am Yaqulun Aftara, are they saying that he has, that is Muhammad has, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, composed it, forged it, Qul Fatu bi surat in mislihi. So put a challenge to him, to them. You bring forth one surah like this. Call for your help, whomsoever you can. In kuntum sadiqeen. If you are really in doubt, and this is a piercing question, searching question, telling them that you don't have any doubt, that this book cannot be composed by any human being. At least this aspect of this book was absolutely clear. But regarding the teachings of the book, there could be two types of persons. There were the persons who felt that whatever this book is saying is correct. Their souls had testified to the truthfulness of this book. But because of their obstinacy, because of their haughtiness, because of their positions, because of their arrogance, they were denying it and belying it, knowingly. But there were others also, because all were not of such a level of consciousness, of understanding. There were others who actually couldn't comprehend what Quran is saying. They, they were finding it difficult for them to understand what Quran is saying. They needed some time. So those people are referred here, بَلْكَزَّبُوا بِمَا لَمْ يُحِيتُوا بِعِلْمِهِ وَلْمَا يَاتِهِمْ تَعْبِيلُ but they have denied this Qur'an all because, you know, they could not comprehend what it is saying. <laughs> they couldn't comprehend, you know, the knowledge that it contained. And its interpretation has not up till now come. This has been translated or interpreted in two ways. Meaning thereby the punishment which the Prophet ﷺ was threatening, that if you don't believe in me, you'll be punished. That punishment has not up till come. Secondly is that because you know from the very beginning, the ayat which were revealed, they were very profound. And you know it was not easy for all of the people to understand them fully. Later on they were explained. And then it became easy to understand by a common man also. That we shall find, you know, in the beginning of the next surah, that is Surah Hud, alayhi salatu wa salam. Alif Lamra, kitabun uhakibat ayatuhu summa fussilat min ladun hakimin khabir. This is a special style of this book. You know, the surahs which were revealed in the beginning are very small, but very profound in meaning, very strong, saturated, you may say, of wisdom. But then you know, slowly and gradually, these things were explained. So, مَفُسَّلَتْ مِنْ لَدُ الْحَكِيمِ الْخَبِيرِ So actually, common people could have found it a difficulty to understand what Qur'an was saying in the beginning. بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِمَا لَمْ يُحِيتُوا بِعِلْمِهِ وَلَمَّا يَعْتَهِمْ تَعْوِيلُهُ كَذَلِكَ كَذَّبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ In the same way, those who were before them, they also belied and rejected فَنْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الظَّالِمِينَ So you, you can your, see you for yourself what was the end, what was, what happened to them, end of the evil doers, what happened to Aad, what happened to Samud. At least these two nations were from the Arabian Peninsula, southern part and southwestern part. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِهِ Now because you know in Arabic language, this Fayl al 
It comprises both of the present tense and the future tense. Min hum man yu minubi. There are among them who believe in it, although they don't accept it openly. They know it, it is from Allah. But they can't do it. Due to their obstinacy, due to their haughtiness, arrogance, this is the, they, they believe this is the this is book of Allah. They have recognized it, but they don't, they are not ready to, to you know, announce it. And there are others who have not been able to comprehend and they don't believe in it. But you can translate it in the future tense also. Among them are who will believe in it sooner or later. Those people who have not up till now understood it. So there is every hope that when the details come to them, they will, they will, they will believe in it. And there are among them who will never believe in it because they are already, you know, understood. And they know it's the book of Allah, the word of Allah, and they have rejected it. So now they, there can be no hope and they have reached the point of no return. And your Lord is very well aware of this, these mischief mongers, these people, haughty people, you know, who have vested interest in the present system, which is threatened by what Muhammad has brought, they are not going to accept it. They have to resist it tooth and nail. Now, these people are discussed. Who are denying the Quran, who are denying the Quran knowingly, that is the book of Allah. There are among them who listen to you very attentively. I told you, Sami'a Yasma'u means to listen. And Istama'a Yasma'u, to listen. وَإِن كَذَّبُوكَ فَقُلِّي عَمَلِي وَلَكُمْ عَمَلَكُمْ And if they belie you, reject you, then tell them, for me are my deeds, for you are your deeds. Whatever I am earning, whatever I am doing, I am earning for myself. Whatever you are earning, now it's up to you to see what you are earning. But it is for you. Antum bariyum mimma amalu. Wana bariyum mimma tamalu. You are not responsible for what I am doing. And I am not responsible for what you are doing. Wa min hum man yastami'oon aileek. And among them are they are people who... Listen to you very attentively, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, apparently. Afanta tusmi'u summa, walau kanu la yaqinu. But can you make the deaf hear? Can't do. They are deaf actually. They are only apparently listening. But there are, the, 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 the hearts have been sealed. Walau kanu la yaqinu. Although they might not be understanding it. So min humma yanzuru ilayk. And there are among them who look at you. Afanta tahdil umiya, walau kanu la yusiru. But can you guide the blind people? They are not actually, they are not seeing. They appear to be seeing, but they are blind. The, the heart, the, the seal has already been put on their hearts. Walau kanu la yusiru. And although they might not be seeing. In the la la yaslebun nasashayan, but don't think, you know, this condition of their. It is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is due to their own obstinacy. They recognize the truth and then they rejected it. So actually this is the, as I told you, a term of physiology. This use atrophy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them the faculty of understanding. But when you know, they knew it, they recognized it. And then rejected it. So that faculty became less and less and less and less. And a time came when it reached that point of no return. That faculty now no more exists now. So this is not any, you know, zulm from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the la la yaslimu nasa shaywa la kinna nasa anfus anfus om yaslimu. Actually. These are the people who are doing wrong to themselves. Allah doesn't do wrong to anybody else, anybody. وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ أَنْ لَمْ يَلْبَسُوا إِلَّا سَعَةً مِنَ النَّهَارِ يَتَعَارَفُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ 
and the day on which we shall gather them all, they will feel as if they had not stayed in the world and in the graves also, but only for an hour of the day. This is how we shall feel when we will be resurrected. You know, and we can have the experience. Now I'm 60 years old, 60, this is the 64th year of my life. But you know, the events of childhood appear to be as if they were today, yesterday. All this distance, you know, and all this, it goes off. So they wouldn't feel that they lived in the world or in the graves, but except for an hour of the day. And they will only recognize each other, oh, this is the person. So they will recognize. People who disbelieved the meeting with their Lord, with Allah. This is the fourth time. Three times last night we read it. And I told you this is the key word of this surah. Those who denied meeting with us, they have put themselves already into the loss. And they are not going to be guided to the right path. And in the background is the threat that was given by all the messengers. I am the messenger of Allah. If you don't accept me, don't believe in me, a punishment will come to you. You will be exterminated. This is the law. All the nations exterminated, finished, destroyed. So the, the same was the threatening that was coming to them through Quran. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِمَّا دُرِيَنَّ كَبَعْضَ الَّذِي دَعَيْدُهُمْ This is also possible that we, see, we show you some of the things which we are promising them. In, within your lifetime, that end might come. أَوْنَكَ وَفَيَنَّكَ And this is also possible that we possess you, make you to die. فَإِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُهُمْ Then to us is their return. ثُمَّ اللَّهُ شَهِدٌ عَلَى مَا يَفْعَلُونَ And then Allah is seeing what they are doing. He is the witness over whatever they are doing. وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ Very important. I told you. There are other ayat also in the Quran to the same effect. دَيْمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا خَلَى فِيهَا نَزِيرٌ وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ هَادٌ and now note here, For every community, we sent a messenger. And when their messengers came to them, well, their case was decided, but with justice. And they were not wronged. And they say, when will this... Promise be fulfilled. When will the punishment come? Well, you know, I've been listening. Punishment will come. Chastisement will come. Torment will come. Oh, we have, a, we are fed up of listening and hearing. It's, you know, more than ten years that we have been hearing all that. If you are true, O Muslims, when this, this torment will come? When this promise will be fulfilled. Tell them, I don't possess, I don't have power for my own self even, for any thing which is hurt, which, which might hurt, or anything which may be profitable. I have no power. Illa mashallah. Except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. Le kulle ummatin ajal, the other part of the law. And for every community, a fixed time period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed from the very beginning. 
اذا جاء جلهم فلا يستاخرون ساعه ولا يستقدمون when that appointed time will come they will not be able to postpone it for even an hour but it cannot be advanced also even if you demand even if i like even if the muslims like well the time has fixed by allah subhanahu wa taala it has been fixed it will come on its time even if i want it won't come earlier because allah subhanahu wa taala has fixed a period for every community the kull ummatin ajal is ajalahum fala yastakhirun sa'ata wa la yastaqdimun qul ar'aytum in ataakum azab azabuhu bayatan aw naharan ma za yastadilu minhu almudrimun say to them have you ever considered if that punishment comes over you suddenly during the night or during the day what good will it be for for which they are hastening it will be azab it will be torment it will be punishment why do you want that it should come soon you should be thankful to allah subhanahu wa taala that he is giving you respite maybe during this time some of you come to believe some of you see the light and they then are included in those who will be saved اسمع اذا ما وقامت به is it that when it has happened and occurred then you will believe in it then it will be of no use alan waqad kuntum bihi tastajilu and then it will be said oh what now you want to believe and you were hastening for it you were demanding it that it should come early but after that comes you know then believing is of no use is of no avail summa qila lil ladina zalamu zuqu azab al khuld now this was the torment of this dunya this world that to any community to whom the messenger was sent and they rejected him most of them but you know what happened at makkah there were a sizable number of people who accepted muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they migrated with him then there were others who had accepted him but couldn't migrate so the conditions in makkah were different that is why allah subhanahu wa taala has said their case is going to be a dip, bit different muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you must note because their case is not the case like the case of do the people of nu or the people of hud they almost en masse rejected their messengers this is not the case فإما نرينك بعض الذين عيدهم أو نتمفينك فإلنا مرجعهم ثم الله شهيد على ما يفعلون. This ayah we had already read, ayah number forty-six. So actually it was a different case with the people of Makkah. But you know what has been discussed in ayah fifty-one that is the torment of this world. Now the real torment and real punishment and real chastisement is to come in the hereafter. ثم قيل للذين ظلموا زوجوا عذاب الخل. هل تجزون إلا ما كنتم تكسبون؟ Then it will be said to these people, these evil doers, now taste this lasting chastisement, this lasting punishment, this lasting torment. هل تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون؟ You are not being rewarded or recompensed, but for what you had been earning. ويستمعون إلى حقه and they ask you o oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is it really the truth that you are seeing now this could be in two ways maybe a person who had recognized that this is the truth but laughingly jokingly o oh muhammad do you actually believe in it do you really feel or you are only posing how are you only joking aqul hu Do you claim it is the truth? But maybe there were the other types of people, because the Yahitu be ilmi who had not been able to comprehend it, he might have been asking this question earnestly, sincerely. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is it really the truth? So this can go both ways. Wa yastabiyuna ahaqul hu ulhi wa Rabbi inna hu la haq. Say yes, 
by my Lord. It is the truth. Now what's the argument in it? There's no logical argument. But the argument of the personality of Muhammad He knew Muhammad never lied. He never told a lie. And now he's saying it. Bala, he, Barabbi, I swear by my Lord. He says the truth. In the whole haqqn, wa maan tumi mojirin. And you will not be able to escape. You will not be able to defeat Allah. وَلَوَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْدَدَتْ بِهِ And if for these people, these souls, if a soul or a person who is the evildoer, had he possessed all the wealth of the world, he would offer it to ransom him on the Day of Judgment. وَأَسَدُّ النَّدَامَتَ And they will hide or conceal their regrets. Remorse. But you know, Abdullah Yusuf Ali has translated it in absolutely opposite way. They will have to declare their regrets. And you know, these, this word Israr, because it's my name also, you know, that there had been controversy in Pakistani press during early 80s about my name also. Just like Mohan Abul Ala Madud's name, it was also discussed. His name is wrong. al Ala is Allah. How come Abu Allah is the father of Allah? So you know, some people said those things in the end. It was in a, a matter of common interest for some days in the press. In the same way, my name was also discussed. Isra. What does it mean? But when I studied, you know, the Salul Arab, I found that this word has both the meanings. To hide something, Asarna you said no Isra. And to 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 tell some secret, because if all you know, it has a quality. This bab if all has a quality which is called in Arabic Nahwan grammar, salb ma'khiz, salb ma'khaz. False means money. If last, without money. To sir means secret. To break the secret, israr, and to keep the secret, israr. So it has double meanings. So these two meanings, you know, they are. Included in this world. Asadun Nadama, they will hide within them the regrets that they will have. What had, what we did. Or they will have to, and they will, you know, they will declare their regrets. Lamma Rabul Azab, when they will see that punishment. And you know, it will be decided with justice among them. And they will not be wronged. Allah inna lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard. Behold, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth belongs to Allah. Allah inna ba'd Allahi haqqun. Behold, the promise of Allah is true. Walakin aksarahum la yalamun, but most of them don't know. Huwa yuhi wa yumid. It is He who gives life. And it is he who puts to death. And then you will be returned to him. Now we find two ayat, you know, very important ayat regarding, you know, Quran, the level of Quran. How big a blessing it is. What are its different aspects? How he influences human beings. Ya Yohannas, O mankind, Qad jaatkum mo'izatum mir rabbikum. To you has already come the sermon, the heart-rendering sermon from your Lord. Note this word, sermon. Qad jaatkum mo'izatum mir rabbikum, number one. Wa shifa'un lima fi sudur. And the cure of the ills of the heart. What are the ills of the heart? Love of this world. Love of wealth. Lust for power. Jealousy. Thoughtiness. These are the ills of the heart. 
of the diseases of the soul. Number one, it is this sermon, heart-rending sermon. Number two, it's the cure for all the diseases of your hearts and souls. Bahudan. Number three, it's the guidance. Warahma. Number four, it's the mercy. But this is Hudam Warahma Lil Mu'mineen. Only for those who believe in it. Now this has a logic in this sequence, you know. Because if the hearts have hardened, just as we know, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ فَيَّكَ الْحِجَارَةِ وَشَدُّ قَسْوَةِ So no advice will be able to be effective. If you know a patient is vomiting, 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 so you can't give him any medicine through stomach. You have to inject the, the medicine. In the same way, if the, you know, land is hard, even if rain comes, the water will just go pass by. It won't be absorbed. So it won't bring out the hidden treasures in that land. First of all, you have to soften the land. So these hearts must be softened first. And for that softening of the heart, you need sermon. Heart-rendering sermon. Which, you know, softens the heart, the soil. The heart is like a soil. It must be softened. For that you need sermon. Now, the medicine will be absorbed. When it is absorbed, now it will cure the ills of your soul. But if it is not absorbed, you just hear from one ear, and it goes out from the other, what use? So actually, number one, Moiza. Number two, Shifaun Nimafi Sudur. And when the ills of the heart and the soul are cured, only then you can avail of the guidance. Otherwise, hold the guidance might be put before you, it's of no use to you. Unless there is a sincere desire to have guidance, all the guidance might be produced before you, it will be of no avail. And the final result, and that is mercy, that will appear in the hereafter. يا أيها الناس قد جاءتكم موعظة من ربكم وشفاء لما في الصدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين قل بفضل الله وبرحمته say it has come from the bounty of Allah سبحانه وتعالى قل بفضل الله this is the biggest manifestation of the bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى only if we could evaluate it only if we could appreciate it. Full bi fazlillahi wa bi rahmati. This is the manifestation of the bounty and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa bi zalika fal yafrahu. On this they should rejoice. If you know there is some lottery of five million dollars, somebody gets it, he rejoices. It has come to me. Oh, you Muslims. Oh, you human beings, if you can only evaluate what's the value of this Qur'an, you must rejoice in it that you have, have it. From Zalika fal yafrahu, although this farah, this word is not used in good sense. La tafrah. Formally it is not used in good sense. But here, if you have to enjoy, over enjoyment, it is farah is over enjoyment, over happiness. But if you want to be over happy, this is the wealth, true wealth. So, فَبِذَالِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمْ مَا لِلْمَعُونَ It is much better than what they are gathering and amassing. The worldly wealth, the articles, the furniture, you know, the articles of decoration, decoration pieces very costly decoration pieces being bought and you know you put them in your dry room so that a visitor is impressed you know the antiques oh everything that you are proud of this Quran is much valuable much better than all those things which they gather this subject has been discussed, you know, in detail in the Madani Surahs. Ask them, have you ever considered that one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down for you 
as provision, as food. فَجَعَلْتُ مِنْهُ حَرَارًا وَحَرَامًا وَحَلَالًا You have declared on your own, out of these something to be permissible, something to be haram and something to be forbidden. On what authority? قُلَا اللَّهُ أَذْنَ لَكُمْ Has Allah given you the authority? Where is the authority? On what? On the basis of what authority are you? have you declared these things? Am عَلَى اللَّهِ تَخْتَرُونَ Or you are forging these things and attributing it, it, them to Allah. وَمَا ذَنُّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْقَذِبَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ These words can be translated in two ways. What is their thought about the Day of Judgment? مَا ذَنُّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْقَذِبَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ What do they think about the Yawm al-Qiyamah, the Day of Resurrection? Those who are knowingly, willingly forging things and attributing them to Allah. What do they think about the day of the resurrection and the day of, you know, of Qiyamah. The second way, what will be their thoughts on the day of Qiyamah, on the day of judgment? وَمَا ذَنُوا الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْقَذِبَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَذُوْ فَضْلٍ عَلَى النَّاسِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bountiful for the mankind. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَهُمْ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ but most of them are not grateful. Wama takunu fi a very beautiful ayah. You know, it's very <coughs> encouraging for a moment when he is doing something good, or he is suffering for the cause of Allah and His Deen. That he see, he knows that Allah is seeing me. I am in the sight of my Lord. He is not unaware of me and my difficulties. If I am suffering for him, he knows it. It's not the case, as you know in Urdu we say, Bar gaye hum unhe khabar na hui. No, he knows. Whatever you are doing, it's in knowledge. Whatever you are spending, he knows it. If any suffering you are enduring, he knows it. Baba takunu fi shanin. And you are not occupied with any matter. Nor do you recite any portion of the Quran. Nor do you do any work. But we are witness over you when you are engaged therein. Is to feed you and even a particle is not hidden from the sight of your Lord throughout the heavens and the earth. Nor is there anything smaller than the particle, nor bigger than the particle. Illa fi kitabim mugeen. But it is recorded in a clear and manifest book. I told you, by this book is meant the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is there in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There have been philosophers, especially, you know, the people who follow Aristotle. And we call them Mashayin in, you know, Arabic philosophy, this school of thought. They are called Mashayin. And they have an idea that Allah knows only the principles and general rules, not all the details. And they are the philosophers, they are the thinkers. That is why we can appreciate why Quran so much emphasizes it. He knows everything. Not a single particle is out of his sight. And you know, the word atom could not be used at that time. And protons and neutrons or photons but here, asgara, wala asgara min zalik. Even the smaller, something smaller than a particle also, he knows. And whatever is bigger, it is his knowledge. Allah, now again two ayat. They are quoted many a time in the sermons, you know. Especially those ulama and those, you know, khutaba and orators who belong to 
the Bareilly School of Thought in the Indian subcontinent. These two ayat, but please understand them here today. What they are. Ala inna uliya Allah la khawfun alayhi wa lahum yahsalun. Hundred percent correct. Behold, for the for the friends of Allah, there is no fear upon them, nor will they grieve. Very correct. Hundred percent correct. All ya Allah. Friends of Allah, who have put all their faith in Allah, who have given themselves over to Allah, supportum beto maya khayshra to dani hisabe kamu beshra. Oh Allah, I give myself over to you. You know what is better for me, and you know what is not good for me. Ke har chesaati ye maarif ani altafist. Whatever comes to me from my from my friend, my beloved. Well, that it is, it is from his bounty. Maybe for the time being, it is appearing to me to be unpleasant. It is hurting me, but I know because when you know, when we used to take tunin for malaria, how you know bitter it was. And the child, if he was forced by the mother, you have to drink it. But it was for the benefit of the child. But that didn't benefit from you know from that medicine. So even if something is unpleasant for us, we know it is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Har chasaqi maari ekhtayne al taafus. Whatever is coming from Him, kul na yusi mana illa ma katab Allahu la lahu wa maulana. We have read this ayah in Surah Al Tawbah. It's hundred percent correct. It's not a piece of poetry. It's absolutely logical. Allah inna al yaa Allah ilaa sukun alayhi wa lahu. But who are they all, Ya Allah? Are they special species, a different species from the human beings? No, they are also humans. Allah Zina Amanu wa Kanu Yattakun. That's all. You can also become a Wali Allah. It's nothing, you know, reserved for certain people. Only you have to have the real faith. Allah Zina Abanu, but Kanu Ya Taqwa. The real faith and Taqwa, the real consciousness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. These two things. Allah Zina Abanu, but Kanu Ya Taqwa. The real Mu'min is Wali Allah, and Allah is the Wali of the true Mu'mins. Allahu Wali Yu Allah Zina Abanu, Yuhwa Jahum Min Azulumati Ilan Nur. والذين كفروا أولياءهم التاهوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات. so it's a two-way phenomenon. if you are sincere to your Lord, He becomes your wali, and you also become His wali. ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. it's so simple. لهم البشرة في الحياة الدنيا. For them, there are glad tidings in the life of this world also. The filakhir and for the and in the hereafter also. لا تبديل لكلمات الله. There can be none who can change the words of Allah, commands of Allah. ذلك هو الفوز العظيم. And this, actually, this is the great success. Real iman, real taqwa. You become one in Allah, and this is the success. La yahzun ka kauluhum. Let not their words, whatever they are saying, grieve you, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inna al-izza talillahi jamia. All glory and honor belongs to Allah, who is the Most Gracious. And he is all, all hearing, all knowing. Allah inna lillahi man fi samawati wa man fi lant. Behold, to Allah belongs everyone who is in the heavens and who is in the earth. Now, man and ma, these are two words. Ma, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth, and man, whosoever is in the heavens, whosoever is in in the earth. وَمَا يَتَّبِعُ الَّذِينَ يَدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ شَرَكَاءَ And these people who are calling upon 
other deities except Allah, they are not actually following any, any real entity. They are their own concoctions. They are not following but their own conjectures. It's their own imagination which they are following. They are following none. And they are only guessing. Nothing else. It is he who has made the night for you so that you can have rest in it. And he has made the day to see. Now there is a special mode or style of the Quran which should be understood from here. You know, which it is called hazf. Economy on words. Whatever is absolutely clear by itself, it is omitted or deleted. Left to the reader to complete it. Two things are opposing each other. He has the word Musliman has been omitted. He has made the night dark so that you can take rest in it. And he has made the day to see so that so that you can earn, you can go about. So one thing omitted from that side, the other thing omitted from this side. You may call it the economy on words. Why to use extra words when it can be understood with this hasf also? Muslim in bracket. Letaskunufi. Van Nahara Mubsiran Letamalufi. In the Fiza de Kalayat in the comment, yes, Maroon. Definitely in these are signs for those who listen. Listen. With a living heart, not listening with a, with a dead heart, with a dead soul. I, I recall, you know, in that very famous poem, a psalm of life, this word has been used. Soul, dead. I will try to recall. Life is a, life is real. Tell me not in mournful numbers. Life is but an empty dream. Life is real. Life is earnest. And the death is not its goal. Dust thou art to dust returnless. What was spoken of the soul? But you know, there, there is a line in the soul, death of soul, sabbat. For the soul is dead that slumbers, and things are not what they seem. Life is real, life is earnest, and the death is not its goal. So that is the point. The, dead, the souls die. It's a universally accepted phenomenon. You know, this higher poetry, but also something near, you know, the consciousness. The consciousness of these poets is at a higher level. They appreciate some realities, psychic, psychological realities some cosmological realities they appreciate. And that is why, you know, people are moved when you listen to that poetry. There are signs in it for those who listen with living souls, living hearts. And they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken son or daughter Aulad, children. Subhana. Glory to be. Glory be to whom? Him. Hual Ghani. He is self sufficient. He doesn't need any son. You need it. Why? Because you know you are going to die. So you think that, you know, some sort of my own existence would continue through my son. After all, he is a part and parcel of my own existence. He has emanated from me. So that is actually why we, we love to have 
you know, sons. But Allah doesn't need it. He is ever living. وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلْرَحْمَانِ أَنْ يَتَّخِنَ وَلَدَا We'll read it in Surah Maryam, inshaAllah. قَالُوا تَخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا سُبْحَانَهُ وَالْغَنِي لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمْحَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي اللَّهُ To him belongs everything that is in the heavens and the earth. إِنْ عِنْدَكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ بِهَذَا You don't have any authority, any warrant on which you are proclaiming it. أَتَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Do you say and attribute to Allah? You know, تَقُولُوا عَلَى قَالْ عَلَى Saying something and then attributing it to someone else. You are saying and attributing to Allah, which you don't know. قُلْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْقَزِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ Tell them. Those who concoct and forge things and then attribute to them to Allah, they will never be prosperous. They will never be successful. مَتَعَوْنِ فِي الدُّنْيَا Except for some enjoyment in this world. If they take it to be success, okay, this success is granted to them. But the real success of the real life of hereafter, they will never have. سُمَّ إِلَيْنَا مَرْجِعُهُمْ Then to us will be their return. سُمَّ نُزِيقُهُمُ الْعَزَابَ الشَّرِيدَ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ And then we shall make them taste the hardest punishment due to what they had been earning and due to what they had been denying and rejecting. وَطْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَى نُوحٍ I told you this surah comprises of eleven rukus. Only two, they are engaged by Abba'u Rusul, the big news of the messengers of the past. And here you will find Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam discussed in half of the ruku. And the rest of one and a half ruku fully devoted to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The first and the last. And the intervening four, that is Hud, Saleh, Lut, Shoaib alayhi salatu wasalam, not mentioned by name even. Only one sentence, one ayah regarding them. You will find this thing absolutely converse. In the next surah, Surah Al-Hud, out of the twelve sections, more than six, they are occupied by Imbaw Rasul. There, Hazrat Nuh will have two full sections, twenty-five ayat, and Hazrat Musa only mentioned in one line. And the rest four will also be devoted, one section each, just as it was in the case of Surah Al-Araf. So this reciprocal ratio and proportion, you know, that is also a sign of the surahs that they are pairs. <laughs> and recite to them the news of Nuh, alayhi salatu wa salam, is qala li qawmihi, when he said to his nation, Ya qawmi in kana kabur alaykum maqami wa taskiri. Oh my people, if my standing amongst you and reminding you by Ayatullah, with the revelations of Allah, has become very hard on you, unbearable for you. Kabur alaykum, maqami wa taskiri by Ayatullah. Fa'ala Allahi tawakkal to. So listen, I have put all my faith in Allah. Fa'ajmi'u amrakum. You all agree on some plan against me. Whatever you can do, do against me. Just the same type of challenging in dance, you know, challenging style. Now whatever you can do, go ahead. Ajmeru amrakum wa shurakakum. And all your false gods, call them also. Summa la yakun amrakum alaykum gumma. And then, then, then there should be no ambiguity about your plans. Make decisions clearly. Summa kvu ilayyal. Then you... Whatever you want to do to me, do it. وَلَا تُنْتَرُونَ Don't give me any respite. I am not asking or requesting you for any respite. Now, you know, this part, you know, it can be only after a very long time. Very long time. Just as we see in Surah al -Nuh. Because there also, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, you know, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for azab. وَقَالَ نُوحُ الرَّبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا 
such harsh words. Don't leave even one single home of these kuffar, you know, intact. So this happens only in the last phases of those struggles going on between the messenger of Allah on the one side and, you know, the chiefs of the nation and the tribe on the other side. When it reaches to that climax, then the prophet or the messenger used to say, Okay, if you are fed up with me, I am also fed up with you. Now do whatever you can. وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَا نُوحٍ إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِ يَا قَوْمِ إِنْ كَانَ كَبْرُ عَلَيْكُمْ مَقَامِ وَتَسْكِيرِ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ فَعَلَى اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ فَعَجْمِهُ أَمْرَكُمْ وَشُرَكَاكُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَكُنْ أَمْرُكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ غُمَّةً ثُمَّ قُوِي لَيَّا وَلَا تُنْزِرُونَ did I ever ask for any pay, any salary, any reward? In Ajri Allah, Allah, my rewards rest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am his servant. I am his whole time paid servant. He will pay me. وَأُمِرْتُ عَنَا كُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I have been commanded that I should be among the Muslims, among the among those who submit themselves to whatever command their Lord gives. Fakazabuhu. So they rejected him, belied him. For Najjaina who among Maufil folk. So we delivered, delivered him and those who were with him in the ark. Fajallahum Khalaif. And we made them the successors. Or the wise students on earth. The rest of the humanity all drunk. And you know, next, after them, all three sons of Nu alayhi salam. They are the forefathers now of all the nations of the world. Sam, Ham, and Yafis. They were the successors. فَكَذَّبُوهُ فَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَمَمْعَهُ فِي الْفُلْقِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ خَلَائِفِ وَأَغْرَقْنَا الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتٍ And we drowned all those who rejected and belied our revelations. فَنْزُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِمَةُ الْمُنْزَرِينَ So you see what was the result, end of those who were warned. They were not destroyed without warning. They were warned for 900 years. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ فَلَبِسَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامَةٍ Only 50 less than a thousand. 950 years. Now in next one ayah, the mention is being made of the four messengers who are mentioned, you know, Separately, each one of them in one ruku, one section in Surah Al-Araf. Summa ba'asna min ba'dihi rusulan nila qawmihim. And then we sent messengers to their nations. After whom? After, you know, the people of Nuh. Summa ba'asna min ba'dihi. After Nuh, rusulam ila qawmihim. Messengers to their nations. Fajawuhum bil bayyanat. They also came to them. With bayyanat, self-evident truths, miracles. Bayyan, something which is absolutely evident and clear. About which there can be no doubt. So these, the teachings of the prophets were bayyan. The miracles of the prophets were bayyan. The revelations which came to the prophet were bayyan. So bayyan can cover all these three things. فَمَا كَانُوا لَيُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا كَذَّبُوا بِهِ مِنْ قَبْلُ The same law of of, you know, Hidayah and Zalala from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whosoever has decided to remain on the wrong path, they never get the guidance. They never avail of the guidance. فَمَا كَانُوا لَيُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا كَذَّبُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ They were not to believe in what they had rejected in the very beginning. كَذَلِكَ نَتْبَعُوا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِ الْمُعْتَدِينَ And this is how we put, we set seal on the hearts of the Mu'tadeen transgressors. Summa ba'asna min ba'adhi Musa wa Haruna ila Fir'auna wa Malayhi. 
Now the last one. I have told you six. They are repeated in the Quran many times. Here, the first and the last are mentioned with names, and the intervening four only referred to in that ayah. Summa basna min badi Musa wa Harun ila Fir'aun wa Malayhi. And then we sent Musa and Harun ila Fir'aun wa Malayhi. Now there the word Qom doesn't appear. This is very important, but because the time, you know, is over for this first session, this is a very important, you know, point of political science or sociology, which must understand why this change. Ila qawmihi, ila qawmihi, ila qawmihi, no. Not to the qawm. Musa and Harun were sent to Fir'aun and Malayhi, to Fir'aun and his chiefs. Bi ayatina fastakbaru wa kanu qawma mujrimeen. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وزيك الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.